Um, well, I, I was just saying I'm not sure that avant-garde has any sort of strict meaning um, these days. You know, it, 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 um, maybe in the 1920s, but now it's probably more one of these terms which we use, at least you know, in cinema, to indicate films which are somehow a little bit different from what one might normally expect from a film. And um, I suppose specifically in terms of having some sort of orientation towards uh, being innovative or trying to, to innovate in some way. And I, I think this first of all has a very broad definition mm -hmm. um, of avant-garde, but, um, but it's, it's, you know, it's all pertinent. My favorite, uh, favorite avant-garde director. Um, well, I'll name two names, um, Philippe Garel, specifically for his 1970s films, and Paul Sharetz, because I think these two guys, each in their own way, at a certain point, pushed um, the form of cinema as far as it could go in one direction or another. Um, you know, I, th I think there are two definite limit points, perhaps not the only ones, but there are two which I personally, in my, my canon, my way of seeing film, mm -hmm. um, make constant reference to. Well, it's a, it's a very big question, but to put it briefly, um, I mean, especially with the type of films which I make, which are pretty well underground films, you know, um, very low budget, often very short films. Um, I think the whole process of making films and writing about them, and to an extent also programming them, um, you know, it's, it's all one really. It's all thinking about cinema, it's all um, just different, different aspects of the same work. Um, yeah, uh, basically I do. Um, I think it's it, it's a good idea for critics to have some notion of what goes into making a film and the sort of difficulties which. Um, and this isn't you know this isn't sort of criticizing the critics or um, sort of being moralistic about it, but uh, you know in, in terms of don't judge the poor films too harshly or don't. Um, you know, don't be very critical. It's more a case of the fact that cinema is so elusive and so mysterious, and it's not only critics. I think directors can sometimes delude themselves as well about the the extent to which chance and circumstances and sometimes completely indefinable factors come into the making of a film. Uh, I think cinema has has its own energy and it can be quite a mysterious energy sometimes as well mm -hmm. and I think it's sometimes hard enough to um, come to terms with this even when you're making films but you know it's almost impossible if you haven't tried and, um, and, and this is something which interests me a lot about cinema this part of the process. Ruzba Rashidi Dean Kavanagh and Michael Higgins. Mm -hmm. um, well, Michael Higgins, um, maybe I'll just say not to be confused with the president of Ireland. It's one nice thing about Ireland, our president is Michael D. Higgins. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like to joke that he uses the D initial to separate himself from the experimental filmmaker. Um, these three guys are friends of mine. They're extremely prolific, they're extremely creative. Um, their films aren't screened nearly broadly enough and it just kills me that they don't have a good international reputation mm -hmm. especially Ruzba who's uh, originally from Iran he's uh, he made a film this year called the, There's No Escape from the Terrors of the Mind which I think is a complete masterpiece and should be screened everywhere so if anyone ever watches this uh, watches this back please go online he has a website ruzbarashidi.com check him out Well, it's, um, there's certainly an argument that sort of critics who previously would have um, had a column somewhere um, are now being swamped by, you know, the vast number of voices on the internet, blogs and Twitter and all these things, um, and they're good aspects and bad aspects of this. I think it's certainly done wonders in terms of making things accessible, um, but, you know, um, I started writing about film in 97 or 98 
and I think I first started publishing online in maybe 2000. So I'm not sure that I really have too much of a sense of, you know, personally, empirically, how it was before the internet. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, the internet is a, a wonderful tool for information. Um, and yeah, there probably is far too much, but um, you have to discipline yourself to be selective. And, um, and in, in general, I think for cinephilia, it's been a, a good thing. I haven't actually really disliked everything I've seen. I mean, almost every program I've attended has been um, in some way fulfilling and, and many of them have been excellent. Um, Pedro Costa's two famous films, Vanda's Room and Colossal Youth, um, it was wonderful to see those projected. Um, two films certainly um, from Vasily Barika's strand, um, the Fifth Gospel of Caspar Hauser by Alberto Grazia and perhaps even more so um, Albino. Um, these films were really surprising and, and, and really impressive. I'd seen most of the Rossellini films before um, except for The Machine That Kills Bad People, a film about a camera which kills evil people with it films. <laughs> Um, which I've just seen and which was absolutely marvellous. So it was great to have an opportunity to watch that as well. Um, Giulio Brassani is a director I admire a lot, and, but I, I haven't seen any of his more recent work, so it was a lot of fun catching up with his new film as well, which um, showed that he's still you know, wonderfully zany in his, his approach to filmmaking. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but um, it's been a good week. I suppose, you know, every archive is, you know, obviously different and has slightly different priorities, but I, I suppose in some way it's trying to preserve and present um, a memory of cinema, trying to prevent, um, prevent forgetfulness in the best way it can, which is especially tough these days considering we live in the Facebook age when things appear and ten seconds later something else has appeared. Um, and in an age when there's such a huge amount of moving image material, um, you know, things think about how much is being uploaded onto YouTube or Vimeo every day. Um, forgetfulness has become very easy, and um, probably one role of the archive in, in, in preserving and presenting work is um, in, in trying to counteract this as best it can.